Uh, religious freedom is unquestionably a very serious human rights issue in Iran at this time. The religious minority situation is quite simple. Iran, of course, is an Islamic state, but there are three recognized minorities. Uh, I've referred to the fact that we've uh, consistently been concerned with the treatment of uh, those who follow the Baha'i faith. And these include the Baha'i, uh, the Christians, and the Jews. We've also over the years had serious concerns with regard to human rights violations of uh, uh, Iranian Jewish, within the Iranian Jewish community. I've had people who were even Muslim who fled from Iran but who didn't conform to the practice of Muslim in the way that the government interpreted it. All other groups are unrecognized minorities and this is where uh, a fair amount of suffering occurs. Christians are at risk in, in Iran and among the Christians people who have converted from the Muslim faith into the Christian faith are particularly at risk. Uh, the, the, the conversion process is, is considered a sin, it's considered uh, anti-government and those people are accused of, of being associated with, with values uh, from Western Europe and the United States. There are also serious concerns with regard to the human rights of Iranian Christians. Um, over the years this has included killings of um, uh, members of the Iranian Christian community including um, some church leaders uh, and ministers. Um, very serious concerns on that front. I've heard testimony from many people of the Baha'i faith that while they were being tortured, they were asked in a very derogatory tone, well, where is your God now? Why can't your God save you now? Um, women who are so, well, where are your women friends now that you are being tortured? They aren't here to protect you. And this is done during severely uh, painful sessions of torture, that the psychological is very clearly present in the prisons of Iran. Iran is a very diverse uh, society in terms of language, nationality, ethnicity, uh, religion, and uh, culture. Now, Iran is a country of many ethnic groups. Uh, this diversity has posed uh, a problem, a challenge for uh, the forces that have struggled for the democratization of Iranian society since the beginning of the 20th century. The number of Iranians who speak as a maternal tongue, uh, Farsi, is about only about 50 percent of the population. The diversity has also been uh, grounds for uh, extreme forms of repression by the government uh, and a violation of uh, the linguistic uh, and uh, cultural and uh, religious rights of uh, uh, various minorities. The other 50 percent speak, for example, Azeri, which is basically Turkish, or Kurdish, or Baluch, or Arabic, etc. And all of these groups, which are primarily at the frontiers of the country of Iran, are ethnic minorities. And then uh, the second uh, major nationality are the Kurds, which are about 9 to 10 percent of the population, uh, making a population of about uh, 6 million people. When we go into the case of the Kurds, we find that the Kurds are an ethnic minority. Uh, the Kurds basically demanded the democratic right to self-rule or self-determination uh, in the form of uh, autonomy within a democratic and uh, federal 
uh, Iranian state. What was happening in Tehran was uh, quite different from developments in Kurdistan in the sense that the Islamic leaders were trying to build a theocratic, uh, highly central and uh, unitary state uh, which did not allow for self-rule uh, by the Kurds or any other group or uh, community. And uh, this is where the tragedy began. I remember the first time in the first time Ayatollah Khomeini, the spiritual and religious leader, declared himself the supreme commander of the armed forces and he ordered the army to wipe out the autonomous movement. تو شهری که به دنیا اومدم سنندج یک ماه تمام با هفت هلیکوپتر شهر رو با راکت بمبارون کردن خمپاره مینداختن شهر زیر شلیک گلوله بود What stunned the people of Kurdistan was the atrocities committed in the name of Islam and by the army و من به عنوان امدادگر توی اتاق عمل بیمارستان فعالیت میکردم دست و پاهای بریده رو که دکترا به من میدادن ببرم سردخونه قادر نبودم در سردخونه رو باز کنم اجساد کودکان، زنان، پیر و جوان شهرمون تا سقف رو هم انواشته شده بودن مردم قالبای یخ و میا بردن میریختن روی اینا که بو نکنه کسی نمیتونست اینا رو ببره تو گورستان و خاکشون بکنه Another religious leader, uh, Ayatollah Khalkhali, accompanied the army and in every city conquered by the army, he ordered summary executions. And the young people in the Sahara Sari, without a break, without a break, without a break, he did this. Executions were without trial. The executed people had no right to defend themselves. Their family, families were not informed of, about what happened. And when uh, the mother of uh, two uh, executed men went uh, to get back the army, the bodies, uh, she was told that she has to pay for the bullets used to uh, kill uh, her sons. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 